Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd. And here we are at the 2015 April, I guess I should say that backwards, April 2015 <laughs> World Docs Virtual User Group Meeting. As if that weren't exciting enough, and by golly, it sure ought to be. Today we are talking about archiving email from Outlook. More on that in a minute when Mary Jo and I discuss it and text searching in multiple versions. Uh, a little bit of a warning, a little bit of information about how to do it, because it's not a default. It doesn't happen automatically. Uh, but before that, a little bit of housekeeping. This thing right here, this is the GoToWebinar control panel. If you're still seeing that on your screen, other than the fact that I've got it on my screen, if you're still seeing it over here on the right-hand side of your screen, that's because you have not clicked this button that looks like an arrow pointing to the right. Because had you clicked that button that looks like an arrow pointing to the right, this control panel would have slid right off the right side of your screen and disappeared. And upon doing so, this button would have changed into one where the arrows instead point to the left. Because clicking it again would cause it to slide back onto your screen. Why would you want it to slide back onto your screen? Well, I'll tell you. It's because you're shy and you have a question. You can type a question here. You can remember to hit the Send button, or not, but it's more effective if you do remember. You can remember to hit the Send button, and Leanne, our moderator, simply our moderator for the humble moderator for today, will um, notice that you have a question. She will interrupt Mary Jo or myself at just the right time, and she will ask your question on your behalf. Now, I don't always tell this story, but my mother could start a story and 20 minutes later have told you 17 other stories but never gotten to the end of her original story. I kind of inherited that. So if I get off track or I'm not answering the question that you've asked, remember to just keep typing things that are going to keep me on track and make sure that I understand that uh, I need to answer the question you have asked and keep remembering to hit send. And, and Leanne will keep interrupting Mary Jo or myself at just the right time and interjecting those things. You might also have follow-up questions. We might start to answer the question, and you might say, well, what about this or what about that? Just remember, type those, hit send. Leanne will interrupt us, and we will get your follow-up questions answered. Now, if you are shy, I'm sorry, if you aren't shy, you can press this button here, this hand that looks like a, and it's got an arrow pointing upwards in front of it. That means raise your hand. And if you do that, Leanne, who is our Simply Humble moderator for the day, will recognize that you have raised your hand. She will interrupt Mary Jo or myself at just the right time. But instead of reading your question, she's just going to unmute your microphone and ask your own question. A couple of things to remember. Uh, your microphone will remain open through the end of the answering of your question. So no Doritos, no Fritos, no potato chips. However, you can interrupt and just ask your own follow-up questions. You are in a two-way channel of communication until we're done answering your question. So jump in, ask your follow-up questions, make sure I stay on track, make sure we're really answering the question that you had. And then once you're done, we'll mute you back up and you can go back to eating your lunch if you're having a late lunch because it is already 3 o'clock. So without any further ado, I'm going to press the magic buttons that will take me to a state where I have World Docs ready to go so that Mary Jo can talk about cleaning up your Outlook and Exchange mailboxes. Mary Jo? All right. So many of you have an Outlook mailbox that is completely full of extra stuff. Stuff. Um, you may delete emails, but then you don't delete them from del the deleted folder. So you have thousands and thousands of emails in that deleted folder. You may have everything still in your inbox and that you're trying to weed through those every day or your sent items and those boxes become bloated over time. And what that does is it causes uh, Outlook to take longer and longer to load. Um, it takes things like, uh, you know, billing. If you're doing practice master fee entries, it takes longer and longer to do that. Um, we want to streamline that, and we also want you to be able to get to the emails that you need to get to quickly instead of having to weed through all those old emails. And uh, not only that, your IT people are probably screaming at you because you've let these 10,000 emails sit in your inbox and your mailbox is getting bloated, and they need to, to get it cleaned up. 
-hmm. And uh, it, it, like Mary Jo says, it's going to be slow until you do that. So we're going to talk about a way that you can get all of those old emails out of your Outlook inbox or sent box or deleted box and into World Docs where they can be uh, searched easily. Much um, better than you can in Outlook. Correct. If you've ever so, tried to look for something in Outlook, it's very difficult. I sometimes wonder why did it show me this email and not that email when I searched for that one term. Mm -hmm. And we all know World Docs has a much better search capability on different fields and different text and, and within the email, all kinds of things that you can do over there. And why is it anyways that people want to keep them in Outlook? Because they're certain they're going to need it later and they're going to need to find it. My brother Dave, the trademark attorney, has all, you know, dozens of Cabela's sale flyers from years and years past because he may need them later. Who cares if the sale ended two years ago? You're going to need that stuff. But if you're not able to find it, it doesn't do you any good whether it's an Outlook or not. I can just see him raising his hand right now, Paul, yeah, well, to be unmuted. Way to go. Well, he's anyway, not going to land. Don't unmute David if he calls. We are going to um, talk about how we can manage those in mass and move them over to World Docs in a functional way that makes sense. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do it. And Paul and I are going to go back and forth on how to set this up because there is, there's no wrong way to do it, um, and there's lots of right ways to do it. I guess maybe there could be some wrong ways, but there's yeah. a lot of right ways. Let's say that. There's a lot of right ways that you can do it. Um, so first off, you could just simply create a profile group that's called archived emails, and you can move those emails into uh, that profile group called archived emails, that nothing else, just highlight them all in Outlook, move to World Docs, and put them into an archived email. Now, we have one that you can see here called email. It's not archived email, but it's where we put all our random emails. Mm -hmm. And you could just choose that email group. In, this, in our case, it says email, but you could name yours archived email. And just draw, highlight all of them in, World Do or in Outlook, hit move to World Docs, and move them all into that email profile group. That's all you need to do. Um, you also could create... Um, some different clients. You could have a, so you could do this a couple of ways. You could create a client called archived email, and then underneath that you could have doc types for 2010 archive, 2011 archive, 2012. You could even break it down by year that way. Or you could create, if your firm already uses an administrative um, client set up in tabs or practice master that syncs with out, uh, World Docs over here, you can create um, just in an email or uh, the same kind of thing, an archived email for 2010 or 2011 or 2012, or just an archived email, whatever you want to do for your user matter that you have in there. Some firms have it as, like, you know, maybe it would be ACS, and underneath that I would have a uh, 01 matter for me and an 02, well, I guess Paul would be the oh, 01 be matter. 01. Hold on, I, I, was, I caught myself. Yeah. Did you see that? I Paul would be that. the 01 matter, and then maybe I would be 02 and so on all the way down. And whenever I wanted to move my emails from Outlook, I could just choose that client and then move it over into my archived email folder. But that's so, really all just kind of, uh, 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 I won't say moot, the point is figure out a way that you're going to store them, whether it be some conglomeration of administrative matters or administrative clients within the client profile, or perhaps creating a separate profile group called email or archived email. You just have to figure out where are we going to put them. You don't have to get too, too thoughtful about this because the whole thing is you're taking them from a place where they're totally unorganized. You're putting them into a new place called World Docs where you can search on you know, date sent, um, text within the document, text within the email subject, all sorts of things you couldn't really do quickly and effectively with an Outlook. Don't get too hung up on how you organize them or where you put them. Just put them somewhere. Don't mix them. Don't just throw them in there and mix them in with some random client. That obviously doesn't make any sense. But find a place to put them and then put them in there. And I'm just going to quickly just open our email one. Just to say I was going to profile this, I just want to open that um, template. Uh, so you can see, uh, oh, we're, we're searching. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're searching. Let, me, let me get into that profile group. Um, let me cancel out of here. So just um, go to profile. First. I'm just a little slow here. I'm sorry. All right, so if I wanted to get this into a different um, profile, I'm going to just change this to be email, just so you can see how simple the email profile can be. 
It doesn't have to be anything complicated. We have one that just has email and folder. Um, it can have user and things like that if you wanted, so you could separate this out. But these folders, this could just be the user. This could be the, the, the um, you know, attorney one, attorney two, attorney three. You could have this be your name. You know, this doesn't have to be anything too fancy. You can tie it to the user list, mm -hmm. so that it's already got that built user list that it can use. Yeah, the folder could be archived email, and then underneath it you could have the, the author, and that's you. Uh, you know, as, as an attorney or as a staff member. So it can be very simple of what you're choosing when you go profile those emails over here. It's just getting them out of Outlook and getting them into World Docs. That is the main key there. And we can, of course, help you, you know, find what's best um, for your firm and set that up. And then everybody would follow the same procedure when they're cleaning out that box. So then what you're doing, obviously, is you're going in and you're, you're highlighting all the emails from 2014 or 2013 or whatever it is that you're moving. Maybe you're moving it month at a time. Mm -hmm. And then you, you simply tell it, hey, I want to move this, mm -hmm. and I want to put it somewhere. And just choose email, Paul, so they can see how easy they're just choosing And I want to, if this folder identified people, uh, I don't think it does. Or archive you, email in this case. Right. Or then the we would select which person or which year and, and move it. That's it. That's all there is to it. You're just going to take this email and put it somewhere in World Docs. The point is, when you move it, I, I happen to select this, but I should have selected it from over here so you could see that I was choosing move to World Docs. You don't want to copy it to World Docs because that leaves it in Outlook. And your, your point for doing this is get it out of Exchange so your Exchange server isn't clogged up. You're either hosting your Exchange someplace else where those mailboxes are expensive on a per gigabyte basis, or you're hosting them in your own Exchange server on site in your office where your IT people then are screaming at you every day that you've got way too much mail in your inbox and way too much mail in your sun items. So don't copy them. Move them. Get them out of Outlook. Get them into World Docs. Once you get them into World Docs, you don't have to worry about how to find them. You just go into search and say, I want to search email for uh, Pumpernickel. And bam, you've got a list of all the Document or emails that contain the word pumpernickel. Mm -hmm. And instantly, I don't know if you've ever tried to search using this search box in Outlook, but it's not instant, especially if you've got 10,000 emails in your inbox mm -hmm. or, your, or your sent items or whatever it is you're searching. And with this search box in Outlook, you're only searching one thing at a time. I can search mm -hmm. deleted items, and I have to move over and click on mm -hmm. sent items and search again, and I have to move over. Or you can expand your search at the end, but the point is it takes a long time to get there. So how do you know if you're a candidate that needs to do this? If you're one of those people that delete your emails and then you delete your box, you're probably good to go. But if you come over here in Outlook and you look at your your deleted list, and this is, uh, Paul's is pretty good, he's only got 54, but if this says like 10,000 and <laughs> Well, um, no, that's, or, my, that's my unread, Mary Jo, I've got 2805. Do you have 2805? Right. I'm not seeing it. But anyway, right if, you're, you're, if your inbox is, you know, super huge. I, I, I want you to kind of look at that and see what you have, and that will help you So uh, basically, decide. go to a, a mailbox. I only have 74 cent items. I'm very... Not bad. Oh, I see. I got you. Deleted items, I got 2805. Now, mm -hmm. if you don't care about these, and these are getting emptied regularly, that's fine. But a lot of lawyers say, oh, I don't want to delete my items. Mm -hmm. I might want to find something. And, you know, people like my brother Dave, they've got 10,000 items just in their inbox. Yep. And you know, twenty thousand items in their sun items. That's that's way too much. If you've got more than a thousand in any of these, that's too much. Then you should consider moving them to World Docs. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk very quickly about text searching and multiple versions. First off, caveat number one. Everybody knows what text searching is. When you go to search for something. One of your options is text and file. That isn't searching. This up here, name comment, that's just searching that name or description field from the profile. This is actually looking at the file, your PDF, your Word document, your email, looking for the word pumpernickel or whatever word you happen to be searching for. Um, everybody knows that. But what people don't know is that you can also search for text in previous versions. Now, a little bit of background. I'm going to create several versions. I'm going to create a document called 
uh, that simply has the word test in it, and I'm going to put it in my. Uh, oh, that's big. How did I? How did I? Holy big text, how, Batman! How, how did I end up with that? That's uh, that's really big. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so I've created a document called Test, and I'm going to save it in World Docs, and I'm going to put it in. Uh, we'll pick on Purdue Law. We like to pick on them. I'm going to call it Test of Text Search or of Versioning. I just kind of want to give you the basis for the fact that what a version is, in case some of you don't under have not have not seen this. And that's just a sample. So I've created a document. I must have spelled versioning wrong, but we're not going to go there. And now I've modified this document. And when I go to save it, I am just really having trouble typing. And I, I must get that squiggly line out of there. Now when I go to save as, one of the things I can do is save as version 2 of the same document. And when that gets done saving, I'm going to type even more stuff, and I'm going to save as version 3 of the same document. So now I have one document that has three versions. Okay? Now, I have, to, I have to tell you something about this test. Text searching re-index itself every night. So this is not going to be searchable until tonight. So I'm only using this example of version 1, version 2, version 3 to show you what versioning is. I don't want you to think that I can instantly search previous versions. So if you go try this on your own computer just to play with it, remember your text indexes rebuild themselves maybe every night, maybe at your firm it's only every week. Um, so you need to check and see how often your text indexes are quote unquote rebuilt before you play with this and assume it's not working. Okay, it's something to just be aware of. Now, when I go look at uh, my favorites, I will see this document I've just created. And I will see that it's got three versions. And when I click on it, it'll let me either display the version list or open the, the most previous version, most current version. I'm going to display the version list, and here's where we see the three versions. Version 1, version 2, version 3. It's sorted by date modified, and for some reason, they're all the same time, so it's decided it's going to order them a little weird. But nonetheless, we have three versions of this document. And then I can click this button here and close the version list. Now, so now I, it's a couple weeks later, and I, I'm trying to find this document, and I want to search for it. But only version 1 has the word I'm searching for. So we go into search, and we assume whatever we choose we're going to search for, I'm going to search for pumpernickel. Well, I just realized I don't know how to spell pumpernickel. Hopefully that's right. Whatever we're searching for, we have to tell it to search prior versions. If you don't do that, it's not doing that. So that's caveat number one. And this is very important because a lot of people understand text searching and a lot of people understand versioning, but they don't know that if you don't under search what in your search box, Go in there and check plus prior versions. You're only searching the most current version. And so if you're trying to find something and it only occurs in a prior version and you're not aware of this, then you're in trouble. Now, one more caveat then. I want everybody to go when they're done here today, I want them to go and do a search and click on search what and see if they even have plus prior versions. Because before GX3, and I think it may have even be a, been a certain release, a certain uh, release that was made after GX3 was initially released, before that, it wouldn't search prior versions at all. And not many people really understood that. And I think that's important that you do. If you're searching and you're looking for a word, and that word will only appear in a prior version, and you're trying to get to that document that's got that prior version, a, you want to know to check it, and B, you want to make darn well certain that you're on a version of World Docs that even includes that functionality. Now, I'm, I'm split. I should have checked this before. I, I'm pretty sure that it was GX3 where they in, introduced this. But my memory is making me think, 
was it a couple releases after they initially released it? Could you have a version that comes up as GX3, which you see right away when you when you when you load it, or could it? Can you safely assume that? I'm not certain. But one thing I can tell you, if you go to search and you click on search what, and you don't have plus prior versions, you don't have a version of World Docs that'll even search prior versions. And if you go to search and you forget to check plus prior versions, you're not doing that. So. Those are my two caveats about searching for text. Text it is. Doesn't matter when you get to these other things. It's text that has always been off. Okay? But you just want to make sure, no matter what you're searching for, that prior versions is checked and 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 and, and be aware of that. Sometimes you're gonna want it, sometimes you're gonna not want it. That's all I have. Next month we are spending the whole month and we hope we haven't gone out on a limb here. I'll explain why in a second. Our topic is GX4. GX4 was announced officially uh, on the 17th of this month at Legal Tech, or I'm sorry, Tech Show. I get those mixed up. Um, it is my understanding that it should be shipping to new people right now, but I don't have my copy yet. So hopefully next month that's what we'll be talking about. Hopefully we will have our uh, demo version of GX4 We'll be able to show you all the neat new enhancements they've made to the user interface, and that's what we're that's what we're going to do. Now, if you go to our website, which is Attorney Computer Systems, oops, too many P's in there. Attorney Computer Systems. Notice the emphasis on the last S. dot com. You can always get to our video content. So if you want to see a prior World Docs virtual user group meeting, you just click on videos. All of our VUGs are listed. The TAP3 Virtual User Group Meeting, or VUG as we call it, Practice Master VUG, World Docs VUG. Um, you can also see our recorded versions of our Coffee Pot webinars, which is my monthly webinar. Mary Jo's eBite video series, a lot of really neat tips and tricks in there. And our longer TV show format, Paul and Mary Jo Show. All of these things having, of course, information about TAPs, Practice Master, and World Docs. Uh, if you want to look at World Docs virtual user group meetings from the past, just click that. Uh, you'll notice when you go there that you get a brief description. You get information on registering for the next event. You get, as you scroll down, prior sessions. This is the one we're listening to and live, at least if, if you're attending live, this is, this is where we are. That's why it says it's currently in post-production. You won't find the video until it's done. But as you scroll down, you see videos from prior months. So all of our content from our all three of our VUGs, plus our webinar series and our eBytes and our Paul and Mary Jo show are on the site, ready to be browsed and also ready to be um, searched. So if you type a word like search and search for uh, whatever word it is you're looking for, even if it happens to be search, uh, you'll be able to get to documents or get to uh, videos that way, or you can just browse through them. So everybody have a good rest of the day, what's left of it, and a good rest of the month, what's left of it, and we'll see you next month when we talk about GX4. Thanks much. Bye-bye.